And on the topic of legal exposure for the president, we turn to CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. Counselor, good morning to you. A lot to talk about here. Let's start with Mitch McConnell's comments. He says the president is morally and practically responsible for the events of January 6th. How might he be criminally responsible as well? Well, Mitch McConnell certainly invited uh, the new attorney general, once he is confirmed, that is Merrick Garland, to go forth, held an investigation, and decide whether or not he would prosecute. By the way, for those of us who watched every minute of the impeachment proceedings, even Donald Trump's own lawyer said, well, we shouldn't be here in impeachment. There always is a remedy in the criminal courts. <laughs> But what we have to see here, Tony, is this is not simply a legal calculus. It is a political calculus. Does Merrick Garland, as the newly installed attorney general once he is, want to go after a former president? Have to remember, before the election, Joe Biden was not necessarily in favor of going after a former political opponent because it hurts democracy. Now, the calculus may have changed politically, but then you get to the legal issues and you have a big First Amendment defense in a criminal court. Why would there be a First Amendment defense, given that the president, not only on the day of January 6th, but leading up to it, uh, spread this large lie that there was fraud in the election. I mean, people defend this country, uh, the military defends this country for that very issue, defending democracy, defending freedom. If the president lifted that up, why wouldn't that be a direct line to incitement? I think what you have is the exact same argument, only in a different courtroom, which would be the criminal court in Washington, D.C. And what would happen here is very different than what happened in impeachment. You do have a First Amendment defense. Whether or not it is successful is another matter. So you would wind up with motions to dismiss. If, in fact, there was a prosecution and a conviction, you would wind up with a series of appeals. It would ultimately have to be decided before the U.S. Supreme Court. Do we look at, as the impeachment manager said, the big lie, six months of activity about election fraud culminating in a speech leading to the insurrection, acts of domestic terrorism, or do we have to look at speech alone? The legal scholars say this is a high bar and a tough case. It seems like it should be an easy case, but the law is not quite so simple. Very interesting. Let's talk about the state of Georgia before you go. So, Ricky, uh, there's a district attorney there who is investigating a case of potential election interference against Donald Trump. What's the likelihood there? How did that work? I think this is the case to watch. There is a grand jury being impaneled for the month of March. You have a new district attorney in Fulton County, which encompasses Atlanta, which would be a Biden voting block, and those would be the jurors. You're looking at election fraud, conspiracy to commit election interference, the interference itself. These could be misdemeanors or felonies. You have a DA who is unafraid. She has gone as far as going after educators with a RICO charge. That's called racketeering. Would she be afraid of doing that here? I don't know. We're looking at the right. president's actions and words, Lindsey Graham, as well as Rudy Giuliani. And we haven't even gotten to the state of New York. Ricky Kleeman, thank you very much. We appreciate it.